Welcome to Brainish English Stories. Orsino, the leader of Illyria, really loved a beautiful lady named Olivia. But Olivia didn't like him back. When her brother died, she sent a message to Orsino saying she wouldn't show her face for seven years, like a nun wearing a veil, all because she loved her brother so much and wanted to remember him. Orsino felt very sad about this and wanted to talk to someone about his love. Luckily, something happened. A big ship crashed near Illyria, and the captain and a young girl named Viola survived. Viola was worried because she thought her twin brother, Sebastian, was lost at sea. They looked exactly alike, except for their clothes. The captain tried to comfort Viola by saying he saw her brother tie himself to a strong part of the ship, so there was hope he survived. Viola asked where she was, and when she found out she was in Illyria ruled by Duke Orsino, she decided to dress like a boy and work for him as a helper. Viola did well in her job, and every day, she had to hear about Orsino's love for Olivia. At first, she felt sorry for him, but as time passed, her feelings changed to love. Orsino had an idea that maybe Viola, who now went by the name Cesario, could talk to Olivia for him and try to make her fall in love with him instead. Viola wasn't too happy about it, but she agreed to go to Olivia's house. When Viola got there, Olivia's manager, Malvolio, who was full of himself and liked to boss people around, said the messenger couldn't come in. But Viola, now known as Cesario, didn't give up and insisted on seeing Olivia. Olivia, curious to meet this bold young person, said, Let's hear what Rossino's messenger has to say. So, when Viola got in front of Olivia and the other servants left, she listened as Cesario scolded her on behalf of the Duke. While listening, Olivia fell in love with Cesario, thinking he was a boy. After Cesario left, Olivia wanted to send a gift to show her love. She called Malvolio and told him to go after the boy. He left this ring behind, Olivia said, taking one from her finger. Tell him I don't want it. Malvolio did what Olivia asked, but Viola, who knew she hadn't left any ring, realized that Olivia loved her. She went back to the Duke, feeling sad for her lover, Olivia, and herself. Orsino was trying to ease his pain of unrequited love by listening to beautiful music, with Cesario beside him. That's right, the Duke told Cesario that night, you've been in love too. A little, Viola answered. What kind of woman is she? he asked. She's like you, she said. How old is she? he asked next. With a smile, Viola replied, about your age, my lord. Too old, by heaven, the duke exclaimed. Let a woman love someone older than herself. Viola gently agreed, I think that's a good idea, my lord. Later, Orsino asked Cesario once more to visit Olivia and plead his case for love. But she trying to change his mind, said, What if a lady loved you the way you love Olivia? Ah! That can't be, said the Duke. But I know, Viola continued, what love a woman can have for a man. My father had a daughter who loved a man, maybe like how I might love you if I were a woman, she blushed. What happened to her? he asked. She kept her love a secret, Viola replied. She never told anyone, and it made her cheeks pale. 
She sat, like patience on a statue, smiling through her sadness. Isn't that true love? But did your sister die because of her love, my boy? The Duke asked. Viola, who had been talking about her own love for him all this time, said, I'm all my father has for a daughter and all he has for a son. Sir, should I go to the lady? Hurry to her, the Duke said, forgetting about the story, and give her this jewel. So Viola went, and this time Olivia couldn't hide her love. She confessed it openly and passionately. Viola left quickly, saying, I won't tell my master about your tears anymore. But Viola didn't know that she would soon feel great sympathy for others' suffering. So when Olivia, in the intensity of her love, sent a message asking Cesario to visit her again, Cesario couldn't say no. But Olivia's special attention to this young page made Sir Andrew Aguecheek jealous. He was a foolish man who had been rejected by Olivia and was staying at her house with her fun-loving uncle, Sir Toby. Sir Toby loved playing pranks, and knowing that Sir Andrew was a coward, he thought it would be funny to arrange a fight between Sir Andrew and Cesario. He convinced Sir Andrew to challenge Cesario to a duel, and he took the challenge to Cesario himself. The poor boy, very scared, said, I won't go back to the house. I'm not a fighter. You won't go back to the house unless you fight me first, Sir Toby said. The fierce-looking Sir Toby made Viola wait for Sir Andrew to arrive. When Sir Andrew finally showed up, he was very scared. Viola, also trembling with fear, drew her sword, and Sir Andrew did the same. Luckily, some officers from the court arrived just in time and stopped the fight. Viola hurried away, and Sir Toby called after her, You're just a weak boy, even more cowardly than a scared rabbit. While all of this was happening, Sebastian had safely reached Illyria after surviving the shipwreck. He decided to make his way to the Duke's court. On his way, he passed by Olivia's house, where Viola had recently left in a hurry. There, he encountered Sir Andrew and Sir Toby. Mistaking Sebastian for the cowardly Cesario, Sir Andrew mustered up his courage and walked up to Sebastian, hitting him and saying, That's for you. Sebastian, not understanding what was happening, fought back much harder and kept hitting Sir Andrew until Sir Toby intervened. Sebastian managed to free himself from Sir Toby's grasp and drew his sword, ready to fight both of them. However, Olivia, having heard about the quarrel, rushed in and scolded Sir Toby and his friend. Then, thinking Sebastian was Cesario, she asked him to come inside her house. Sebastian, feeling dazed and captivated by Olivia's beauty and charm, agreed. That very day, Olivia was in such a hurry that she married Sebastian, even though she hadn't realized he wasn't Cesario. Sebastian, on the other hand, wasn't entirely sure if he was in a dream. Meanwhile, Orsino, hearing that Cesario had not succeeded with Olivia, visited her himself, bringing Cesario along. Olivia met them both outside her door, thinking Sebastian was her husband, and she scolded him for leaving her. To the Duke, she said that his love for her was as good as barking after music. Are you still so cruel? Orsino asked. I'm still so devoted, Olivia replied. Orsino's anger grew, and he vowed to kill Cesario whom he knew Olivia loved. He told him, Come, boy. 
Following him as he walked away, Viola said, I'd die a thousand times to bring you peace. Olivia got very scared and cried out, Cesario, husband, wait. Her husband, the duke asked angrily. No, my lord, not me, Viola replied. Bring the priest, Olivia cried. The priest who had married Sebastian and Olivia came in and confirmed that Cesario was the groom. You tricky young man, the duke exclaimed. Farewell, take her, but let's never meet again. At that moment, Sir Andrew approached with a bleeding head, complaining that Cesario had hurt him and Sir Toby. I didn't harm you, Viola said firmly. You drew your sword on me, but I tried to be fair and didn't hurt you. Despite Viola's protests, nobody believed her. However, their thoughts quickly turned to astonishment when Sebastian entered. I'm sorry, madam, he said to Olivia, I hurt your relative. Forgive me, my love, for the vows we made not long ago. One face, one voice, one clothing, and two people, the duke exclaimed, looking at Viola and then at Sebastian. They're more alike than two halves of an apple, someone who knew Sebastian said. Which one is Sebastian? I never had a brother, Sebastian said. I had a sister who the sea took away with its waves. If you were a woman, he said to Viola, I would let my tears fall on your cheek and say, Welcome back, Viola, who was lost at sea. Then Viola, overjoyed to see her beloved brother alive, admitted that she was indeed his sister, Viola. As she spoke, Orsino felt the love that comes from deep sympathy. You told me a thousand times that you'd never love a woman like me, he said. I'll take back all those words, Viola replied, and I'll keep all those promises. Give me your hand, Orsino said happily. You'll be my wife and the queen of my dreams. So, gentle Viola found happiness, and Olivia found a loyal lover and a good husband in Sebastian. They became true and loving spouses to each other.